We're here today to take you on an exciting journey through history, delving into some really peculiar historical happenings that are both intriguing and bewildering. As we explore these eight unusual historical facts, we're sure to stumble upon some rather astonishing details. From the intriguing saga of King Tutankhamun's lineage, the eerie phenomena of speaking dolls, to the unexpected molasses flood, our video encapsulates a myriad of strange events that would make your jaws drop. History, as we know it, is not always filled with glorious victories or stunning beauty. Sometimes it takes us through a maze of the bizarre, the extraordinary, and truly unbelievable. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be amazed, and possibly a little grossed out, by some of history's weirdest moments. All right, brochacho, fasten your seatbelt. We're diving deep into the intriguing world of ancient Egyptian royalty, where the lines between familial relations blur. If you thought your family's festive reunions were chaotic, brace yourselves for an insight into King Tutankhamun's family drama. Correct, the young pharaoh who ruled Egypt. This is no mere speculation. Rather, it's backed by solid research and genetic testing. His father was most likely also his uncle, a distinguished gentleman named Akhenaten. Now you may be wondering who was his mother then? The odds are in favor of one of Akhenaten's own sisters. A shocking revelation, wouldn't you agree? This certainly a fresh spin on the term, homegrown family affair. Such closely knitted family ties could well be the explanation behind King Tut's frail health and the bone disorder he grappled with throughout his life. The plot thickens, but that's not the only bizarre fact we've got for you today. Let's paint a more detailed picture of this. It's a typical evening, Major Rathbone, a distinguished military officer, finds himself in the company of President Lincoln and his wife, enjoying a theatrical performance. In the midst of the drama unfolding on stage, another far more sinister plot is about to unfurl. Out of nowhere, notorious actor-turned-assassin John Wilkes Booth materializes, his intentions deadly. With a swift motion, Booth shoots Lincoln, causing immediate chaos in the once tranquil theater. In the ensuing pandemonium, Rathbone, driven by his sense of duty, makes an effort to apprehend Booth but, to his own dismay, his attempt is unsuccessful. This failure would come to torment him, plaguing him with guilt so profound that his health begins to deteriorate rapidly. The guilt becomes so unbearable that Rathbone ultimately murders his own wife. He would end up spending the remainder of his days in the solitary confines of a mental institution. And you thought, your guilt over your search history was bad. Transitioning now to the Renaissance era, a period of vibrant cultural resurgence, a time when sailors, voyagers, explorers, just returning from the unknown landscapes of the New World, brought back an unwanted and rather unfortunate souvenir to the continent of Europe, the dreaded disease, syphilis. Unbeknownst to them, they carried with them not just tales of uncharted territories, but a bacterial infection that would change the face of European society. What was a widespread outbreak of this sexually transmitted disease? The effects were truly gruesome, causing physical disfigurement and mental deterioration. A particular study estimates that in the mid-1770s, approximately 8% of residents of both sexes had been infected with syphilis before the age of 35. The estimated infection rate among under 35-year-olds in rural communities within a 10-mile radius of the city, however, was a little under 1%. Europe's golden age was blighted by this pervasive illness. So, as we delve further into history, remember this tale. Next time you're on vacation, perhaps consider sticking to more traditional, safer mementos like fridge magnets as souvenirs. Fast forward to the late 1800s and we've got a vampire panic in Rhode Island. Picture it. A homey, picturesque landscape gripped by a terror unlike anything its inhabitants had ever known. Yes, you're hearing correctly. Not a natural calamity, not a plague, but a vampire panic. It's a tale so outlandish, it almost borders on fantasy. Vampires, the mythical creatures of the night, were suddenly all too real for these good folks. A frightful outbreak of tuberculosis was pummeling the town, and the blame fell squarely on the supernatural. Tuberculosis was known as consumption at the time, as it appeared to consume an infected person's body. It is now known to be a bacterial disease, but the cause was unknown until the late 19th century. The infection spreads easily among a family. Thus, when one family member died of consumption, other members were often infected and gradually lost their health. People believed that this was due to the deceased TB sufferer draining the life from other family members. The belief that consumption was spread in this way was widely held in New England and in Europe. 
In an attempt to protect the survivors and ward off the effects of consumption, bodies of those who had died of the disease were exhumed and examined. The corpse was deemed to be feeding on the living if it was determined to be unusually fresh, especially if the heart or other organs contained liquid blood. After the culprit was identified, there were a number of proposed ways to stop the attacks. The most benign of these was simply to turn the body over in its grave. In other cases, families would burn the fresh organs and rebury the body. Occasionally, the body would be decapitated. Affected family members would also inhale smoke from the burned organs or consume the ashes in a further attempt to cure the consumption. Talk about a not-so-fun family reunion. Speaking of the late 1800s, Thomas Edison was busy trying to create talking dolls. The renowned inventor, known for his genius, was venturing into the world of children's toys. The dolls were intended to be unique, a product of innovation, something that hadn't been seen before. They were meant to be companions for children, sparking imagination in a new, exciting way. But alas, every inventor faces setbacks, and Edison was no exception. The toys were a commercial failure, and for good reason. They were too expensive for the average consumer, making them inaccessible for many. This was one factor contributing to their downfall. More importantly, the technology itself was unreliable. Phonography was still in its infancy and was far from perfect. The dolls were inconsistent, often failing to work as intended. This doll talked by means of a scaled-down phonograph inside its body, which played nursery rhymes like, Mary had a little lamb. Only made for a short time, the doll's mechanism was unreliable, and the recorded voices scared children. And now brace yourselves for a truly horrifying fact. In the 19th century, dentists used real human teeth attached to ivory plates for dentures. This might seem gruesome and unthinkable today, but it was a common practice back then. To solve the problem of missing teeth, they resorted to a rather macabre solution. The teeth used for such procedures were not fabricated, but extracted from real human beings. The source of these teeth, often they were obtained through an unsettling practice, looting corpses. This was not done in secret, but was a widely accepted method for obtaining teeth. In those days, the concept of hygiene was not as it is today, and this practice was not seen as unusual or disturbing. It's shocking to think about the contrast with today's dentistry practices. Just imagine, you could be walking around with someone else's teeth in your mouth. Once upon a time, in 1929 at Princeton University, Professor Ernest Glenn Weaver and his research assistant Charles William Bray embarked on a peculiar experiment that would bridge the gap between feline and telephonic realms. Their curiosity led them to an unconscious yet living cat, which they transformed into a working telephone to unravel the mysteries of auditory perception. The experiment began with the sedation of the cat, followed by a delicate procedure where its skull was opened to expose the auditory nerve. Ingeniously, a telephone wire was connected to the nerve, with the other end linked to a telephone receiver. Positioned 50 feet away in a soundproof room, Weaver eagerly awaited the results as Bray whispered into the feline subject's ears. The prevailing belief at the time suggested that the frequency of a sensory nerve's response correlated with the intensity of the stimulus. In simpler terms, as the sound grew louder, the frequency or pitch received by the ear should also rise. As Bray manipulated the sound's frequency, Weaver, through the telephone receiver, experienced a synchronous change in the frequency of the received sound. This groundbreaking experiment confirmed that the frequency of the auditory nerve's response indeed correlated with the frequency of the sound. To solidify their findings, Weaver and Bray conducted additional trials under different conditions. Placing the wire on other tissues or nerves yielded no sound, and restricting blood circulation to the cat's head halted sound transmission. The success of their experiments earned them the prestigious Howard Crosby Warren Medal of Society in 1936. Interestingly, Weaver and Bray were less concerned with the practical applications of their discovery and more focused on refining the experiment's methodology. Their techniques gained acclaim among physicians, serving as a foundation for cochlear implants, devices that would later convert sound vibrations into electrical signals for the brain. And so this peculiar tale of a cat-turned-telephone became not just a quirky historical anecdote, but a crucial chapter in the evolution of auditory research and medical technology. And finally, in 1919, Boston experienced a sweet but deadly catastrophe. A colossal tank, filled to the brim with thick, dark molasses, burst apart. This rupture, unanticipated and violent, 
led to an astonishing viscous flood that surged through the city streets causing chaos and confusion amongst the unprepared populace. It was an unprecedented event that swiftly transformed into a tragic disaster. In its wake, the flood claimed the lives of 21 innocent Bostonians and caused large-scale extensive damage to properties and the city's infrastructure. The aftermath of the incident was equally daunting. The cleanup operation was a monumental task, requiring weeks of tireless, painstaking effort from the citizens of Boston. The lingering, unmistakable smell of molasses was a constant, bittersweet reminder of the catastrophe that haunted the city for years afterwards. That's a sticky situation no one wants to be in. So, there you have it. From the intricate family drama that unraveled amidst the grandeur of ancient Egypt, to the torturous guilt that consumed Major Rathbone following his encounter with infamous assassins. From the devastatingly deceptive syphilis souvenirs left behind by unsuspecting to the unfathomable vampire panics that sent shivers down every spine in New England. Each recollection serves as a testament to the fact that history is filled with incredibly disturbing and bizarre facts. It seems truth really is stranger than fiction. Until next time, stay curious, friends.